Hi, my name is Ann Wolf. I'm a physical therapist at Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and I'm part of our infant development team. And today we are gonna be talking about treatment for an infant that is in a cranial remodeling orthosis or a cranial helmet. Um, if you saw our video last week, we walked through the steps of the evaluation process. So if that piece is unfamiliar to you, that video might be helpful. This video is gonna focus on what we do for treatment once we've done the evaluation, um, we've referred for a cranial remodeling helmet, your child has either received that cranial remodeling helmet or is in the process to get it, um, which we'll touch on that in just a second as well. Um, and then what we do for treatment and why treatment is still important from a PT perspective. Um, so often once we evaluate a child and we determine that a cranial remodeling evaluation is needed or we determine that based on severity, um, the recommendation would definitely be a cranial remodeling orthosis to improve head shape, that we refer to, a cranial, to an orthotist who would be able to do that evaluation. That process can sometimes take a little bit longer than we would like it to. Um, we generally try to get infants to the evaluation for cranial, cranial remodeling orthosis before six months between four and five months is really ideal, but definitely by six months. Um, and that is really related to the skull growth that happens around that time and wanting to maximize the amount of change that can happen in a helmet. Um, by the time an infant reaches 12 months old, the sutures in their skull have generally closed. And because of that, you're less likely to see change. So the earlier we can get them into a helmet um, is, typically going to be more impactful for a head shape change. So at the very least, we want to get the evaluation completed as early as possible. Again, four to five months, really ideal, definitely before six months. Um, but once that evaluation happens, often there can be sometimes specialist follow-up visits needed dependent on insurance and the amount of justification needed for a helmet. But also it takes time from the time the measurements are completed for a helmet to the Kind of creation of the helmet to then being able to go back and make sure it fits right and get fitted. Um, and then after that, you often have kind of a ramp up process for how many hours per day you're in the helmet. Um, so that can sometimes take a little bit too. So during all of that time, it would still be important on our end that we're continuing to kind of work with a family and work on treatment-based activities. Once a helmet is received and your child is in their helmet, it continues to be pretty important to keep with PT or sometimes OT, um, dependent on which clinic you're going to and the specialties of each practitioner. So we're gonna walk through a little bit more of that today. So kind of talked about the process for getting the helmet. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get it than you're kind of anticipating, but once you receive the helmet, the helmet is treating the flattening of the skull. So whether that is plagiocephaly or brachiocephaly or sometimes both, um, the goal of the helmet is to relieve pressure on the area that is flat so that it can continue to grow into that space. Um, that's the goal of the helmet. The goal of PT or OT, our services, is to treat the underlying cause of why that happened in the first place. So that's pretty important. Um, we obviously want to walk with you on getting the, the flat spot to improve, but we really wanna treat the underlying cause of what happened to cause that. Um, the biggest reasons that we see, the biggest diagnoses that we see in our clinics um, that can cause plagiocephaly or brachiocephaly are torticollis or any type of full body tension. Um, tension in infants isn't always torticollis, but it can be. Um, so torticollis, body tension, either through the neck or through the trunk, developmental delay, low tone, so low muscular tone. Um, and then there can be some other diagnoses in there as well, but those are kind of our biggest ones. But really we're looking at what is the underlying issue for why there was less movement or less ability to move either of the neck or sometimes the full body. So that is generally the reason that a child has a flat spot is because they were less able to move into different positions on their own. So they spent a significant amount of time in one position and that caused the flattening. The biggest pieces of PT treatment that we're going to talk about are range of motion. First and foremost, we want to assess how much movement do they have actively and passively. Those are both important. Um, we're looking at the full body. So we're looking at the neck. We're looking at the trunk. We want to see what their hips look like. Um, that piece is likely the most important when you're getting started is figuring out where the restrictions are and how can we help improve that. 
So once you can passively improve motion, then you're trying to use it actively. So you've created the movement passively. Now you want to use it actively. That means we're strengthening. So we're doing strengthening in a variety of ways. Um, these guys are little, so you don't maybe think about it as strengthening, but the activities that we would work on would be different positional changes. So tummy time, that's usually a pretty big one. Um, a lot of our kids, don't love tummy time. And so that can be something that we work on together. Whether we do tummy time on a ramp, maybe a flat surface, maybe a therapy ball, maybe we do tummy time on either the practitioner or on the parent. Um, but we can work with you on ways to do that so that one, we can de-weight different parts of the skull, but two, we can work on all of the muscles through their back, through their hips, through the back of their neck um, to really build that strength. We can also work on sideline positions. We can work on introduction of rolling skills. So whether your child is ahead, maybe the child is you know three or four months old and rolling isn't expected to be an independent skill yet, we may still work on facilitating that so that they're better able to get into new positions to de-weight the back of their skull. Or maybe your child is older and for you know, kind of a variety of reasons, like we talked about before, rolling was a hard skill to develop. So we might be working on facilitating rolling and helping your child learn to roll, even if they are past the window where you would have expected them to learn rolling. So rolling skills so that they can access new positions. We're going to work on sitting skills, whether that is sitting independently, we can work on sitting on a ball for core strength. Um, there are lots of different ways that we can work on sitting skills. We can work on it supported, unsupported. We can kind of layer in different challenges based on what your child needs to be able to improve their strength, especially through their core and through their neck so that they are able to, again, access all of these different positions and move their head into lots of different places so that it's not positioned in one spot all the time. Um, transitional movements, that is pretty significant for most of our kids. So you want them to be good at sitting, but you also want them to be able to get into sitting by themselves so that they can utilize that position actively. So transitions is something we would work on. Um, and then as they kind of continue to progress, we continue to reevaluate them. So we determine, well, what skills should they be mastering now? What skills should be emerging? Um, why can't they access those skills? Let's find the underlying cause of why they can't and let's work on those pieces. So again, this is all for treatment once they're already in the helmet. So the helmet is fixing the head shape. We want to correct the underlying reason for why they had the head shape deformity kind of happen in the first place. So that would be a lot of our treatment. Um, hopefully this video was helpful for you and you can kind of better understand why infant therapy services might be important for your child, even if they have already received a helmet or you're kind of wondering what this looks like for infants. Um, hopefully the videos were also helpful to kind of see a little bit of it in action. So if you have questions or comments, please leave them here. If you have a child that you think you notice a flat spot and you would like to have them evaluated so we can kind of help work through the process of whether they do need a helmet or whether they maybe need a repositioning program, um, please reach out to us. Um, you can use our inquiry form on the website to get in touch with a therapist directly to schedule an evaluation. Um, and we would love to hear from you. Have a great day. Thanks.